see you watching. Just go ahead and click on subscribe, like, share, comment. It's free. Citizen to a citizen, fool. Citizen to a citizen, fool. Another one. Episode of pause. Pause, yeah. <laughs> this is episode six. Um, today we're talking about uh, the use of lethal force, right? Um, specific to these recent pranks that have been going on. Well, not so much recent. They've been going on for, I mean, years, but they're just getting worse and worse and worse. And back in April, uh, uh, somebody got shot. Um, Tanner Cook. He's a, a huge YouTuber. He does pranks in malls and airports and targets and things like that. Uh, let's take a look at it real quick. Of a YouTube prank that ended with a shooting. A Loudoun County jury found Alan Coley not guilty of the most serious charge connected to the shooting at Dallas Town Center. David Kaplan's working this one tonight. You got your hands on the video. What happened here? Yeah, Jim, Tanner Cook's YouTube page has nearly 56,000 followers. Most videos show Cook going to public places and doing some sort of prank that people typically have negative reactions to. We're going to walk you through this video without audio first, then we'll play the whole thing for you. On April 2nd at Dallas Town Center, Cook was being filmed as part of his YouTube page as he walked up to Kali, who was picking up a food delivery. On Cook's phone, he had an automated voice play a vulgar message that was repeated multiple times to Kali, who tells him to get away or he'll call the police, is what it appears to say in the video. Kali tries walking away. Cook appears to follow. Then the lone shot rings out. Here's the full video. Kali did have a concealed carry permit. Cook has recovered. Kali was found guilty of discharging a firearm in a public place. Again, not guilty on some of the wounding related charges. His attorneys, Kali, is getting a hearing next month arguing that the verdict should be thrown out on the discharge in public since it was self defense. Today, the Loudoun County Commonwealth's attorney says the force used by Kali, they believe, did not match, match the threat he faced. Cook's father, Jeremy, agreed with that, but disagreed with some parts of how the Commonwealth's attorney prosecuted its case. Where's the line where it became a life-threatening situation where he had to use deadly force? If you see that line that was crossed, then you can think like that. But if you watch the video, at no point do you go, oh, there's where it became a physical point where this guy had to defend himself. That, that, that never happened. They told me this was a difficult case. One juror told me that uh, he did believe that Cook was a threat Kali, uh, to Kali, specifically pointing to Cook's size relative to Kali and the fact that Cook wasn't speaking and kept following him and that Cook had an expressionless face. The jury originally told the judge they were deadlocked. Then they came back with the verdict a short time later when they handed down that verdict yesterday. What was the jury thinking in the room? What changed their mind? I have the one juror's perspective. We'll have that at 6.30 as we continue our coverage. Okay, so that happened uh, back in April. 
It was a huge thing. Um, it, it, I mean, so huge it made it to not just the news cycles, but Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. April, a Virginia man who pranks people for YouTube videos was shot while tricking someone in a mall. Good. Uh, they recently found the shooter, who's a delivery delivery guy, not guilty. Um, uh, I guess aggravated assault. I don't know exactly what the charge is, but I'll roll it in. Um, but he's guilty of another charge. Um, but, you know, I, I've only been a concealed carry instructor for, what, since 21. I've been around guns all my, all my life, but as far as instruction and how it applies to the law, uh, it's as far as using lethal force, um, three years as an instructor. But prior to that, I've had my concealed carry, you know, you take the class, they teach you all of that. But now I'm teaching it, it means a lot more, right? You, you think a little bit more uh, before you take action. You know, you're a little bit more aware of your situation and what, what constitutes the use of deadly force. Um, which I'm gonna roll up, right? There's, there's four elements uh, of the law of justified self-defense. I'll, I'll put them up here in, in a second. But um, before we, before we you know, look at that, we've got to learn a couple of definitions, right? Imminent harm, great bodily harm, sexual assault, excessive force, uh, aggressor, instigator, simple assault. And I'll, I'll roll that in uh, so you guys can take a quick look at that. Um, but the use of deadly force, right? For you to use deadly force, there has to be four elements present. All four of them, not one or two, of them or one two and three all four so i'll read this uh as it's as it's defined um for you guys this is a quick education i, I don't want to make this video long and drawn out but uh four elements of the law of justified self-defense uh, a citizen is legally justified in using deadly force against another if and only if notice those words in red uh, the citizen actually believes deadly force is necessary to prevent an imminent threat of death, great bodily harm, or sexual assault, and the facts and circumstances prompting that belief would cause a person of ordinary firmness to believe deadly force was necessary to prevent an imminent threat of death, great bodily harm, or sexual assault, remember the definitions, um, and the citizen using deadly force was not the instigator or aggressor who voluntarily provoked, entered, or continued the conflict leading to deadly force, and force used was not excessive, greater than uh, reasonably needed to overcome the threat posed by a hostile aggressor. Uh, was Tanner Cook a hostile aggressor? I would say he was a hostile aggressor. A complete stranger walks up to you, putting the phone in your face um, and, and playing this audio to your ear and, and uh, following you. And I would consider that hostile. Um, was equal force used? I'm no judge, but you know, I've, I've taught countless, countless concealed carry classes and we go over this uh, uh, in depth in the class and you know, I create scenarios and situations so people understand, you know, what's, what, what's equal force? You know, a phone in your face does not constitute, in my opinion, and by the way, these are North Carolina uh, Department of Justice uh, uh, elements. This, this is where the education is coming from. Is that is that equal force? You know, can you just shoot somebody because they had a phone in your face and they, and they were following you? No. Um, in North Carolina, it, it, it is a stand your ground, uh, stand your ground state. Uh, there is no expectation to retreat, but I tell all of my students and participants, listen, if you can retreat, re retreat, right? Um, and the delivery guy was walking away. He was getting back down by this, by this, uh, this tuber. And uh, he decided to stand his ground and, and shoot him. Um, my opinion only, just my opinion, a bit excessive. Now, Is this cool for people to go ahead and do it, it, it with these pranks? Bullshit. A bullshit. A bullshit. I mean, there was another situation that, that came up with Tanner where he was 
um, trying to scare this woman into thinking that um, uh, she was being stalked. These two women, I'll, I'll play that. 21 year old YouTube content creator known for making prank videos. Alan Coley is accused of shooting Cook during a prank at Dulles Town Center. Tonight, the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office confirms it was aware of Cook and his prank videos weeks before the shooting. And tonight, we're hearing from a woman who says she was targeted by one of Cook's jokes. Our Matthew Torres has her story. Tanner Cook may have been critically shot trying to record another prank for his YouTube channel. But from his hospital bed, the 21-year-old tells WSA9 he plans to keep making videos because it's his passion. It makes me angry. It makes me worry for our community. That's leaving Natalie Lomax of Herndon concerned. Lomax says she and her sister were left traumatized by one of his pranks at the Target in Sterling early last month. She describes them more as harassment. We were approached by a man who was wearing a security shirt. He came up to my sister and I and stated that there was a known stalker in the Target who he noticed had been following us. He said he's gothic, he is wearing dark eyeliner, dark lipstick. We look over and we see the gothic gentleman standing there staring at us. She says that security man helped walk them to the checkout line as the so-called stalker kept following them. The next day, she reported what happened to Target in the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office. Okay, so, you know, she was she was irritated. She went to the police. Uh, the police knew who Tana was um, and didn't do anything. You know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. This is, we're all, yeah, hindsight is 2020. Could they have stopped this man from getting shot, perhaps? You know, if the police had intervened three weeks, four weeks earlier and said, hey, buddy, you know, take it easy. I get it. You have a passion for, uh, for um, you know, filming videos and, and being a star. But you know, there's there's other routes to, to doing that without getting people involved and without getting yourself shot. You know, because there's people out there that you know will shoot you for less. Why put yourself in danger? Anyway, um, I'm gonna wrap this up. You know, give me your thoughts. What, what do you think about it? Uh, me personally, you know. In, in what I do as far as instruction, and if someone asks me, I would say, no, you know, that's not a reason to shoot somebody, you know, make your way out of it, you know, but it's, it's not just, it's, you know, there's, there's people that, that think otherwise. Anyway, check the video out. Give me your thoughts. Um, I, I got to tell you, it's been an overwhelming increase in, in subscribers and viewers. I love it. I like it here. I'm really beginning to like this place. And the people. I'm starting to believe from the bottom of my heart that this is where I'm supposed to be. Uh, it's given me a uh, drive to go ahead and, and continue uh, creating this content. You know, not just not just talking about guns, but um, or firearms, but talking about the law and the situations kind of related to it. But. Thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. We'll talk to you soon. Pause. What? Citizen to a citizen, fool. Citizen to a citizen, fool. What? Another one.